In many ways, Jefferson was a great Democratic Republican, but remember, he did not feel that his presidency was uh, one of the highlights. He certainly did not put it on his tombstone. So what went wrong that caused Jefferson to feel that way? Let's start taking a look at the ways in which he is not a great Democratic Republican. Remember what he wants to do is he wants to make the government smaller. He wants the strict interpretation of the Constitution. However, that is going to change when he has the opportunity to purchase Louisiana. Louisiana is not the state that we think of today. Louisiana is everything you see, see here that is lightened. And the Louisiana Territory is offered to the United States for sale for the bargain price of $15 million. The problem with this is nowhere in the Constitution does it say that we can purchase foreign land. So this is just like the National Bank, where it doesn't say we can do it, it doesn't say we can't do it. Now remember, Jefferson, as a strict um, interpret interpreter of the Constitution, believes we focus on the yes list, the government can only do those things. Well, here, what he wants is he really wants to buy Louisiana. And so he is going to actually take the Federalist approach and loosely interpret the Constitution to authorize the purchase of Louisiana. Here are his reasons for doing it. He wants to double the size of the United States, which means there is so much more land for farming. And remember, that's who votes for Jefferson. We also had problems getting through New Orleans before when the Spanish owned it. We don't have to worry about that anymore because we, the United States, now own the city of New Orleans. We're going to be able to add 13 states to the United States and we don't have the French here anymore, right at our back door, potentially ready to invade. Another reason to do this is that very often people associate size with power, and the U.S. is a much larger country now, and in theory, seems stronger. Nonetheless, Jefferson did violate his beliefs as a strict interpreter of the Constitution and has now loosely interpreted it to buy Louisiana. The Federalists have a field day with this. Now that he's purchased this huge chunk of land added to the United States, Jefferson wants to know what's out there. He hires Lewis and Clark to lead an expedition of roughly 40 men to head out through Louisiana and find out what is there. They are going to use the guide Sacagawea to come along and act as an interpreter uh, throughout their travels through the West. They don't stay just to Louisiana. You can see up here, they clearly cross over into that other uh, disputed territory and make it all the way out to the Pacific Ocean is what we're seeing here. Uh, they're gone for about two years and during that time, they are constantly gathering information about the various Native American tribes they encounter, languages they hear, um, plants, animals, they gather specimens of all of those kinds of things to bring back with them because Jefferson wants to know what's there. One thing they are looking for is the elusive Northwest Passage, which finally it is determined that the Northwest Passage, that shortcut through America to get to Asia, does not exist. While this is going on, Jefferson is easily reelected in 1804. Uh, his first term went extremely well but it's the second term where things start to get a little bit ugly for him. One reason or one way in which, in which things are getting ugly has to do with the Barbary pirates. The Barbary coast is right here in Northern Africa. And this is in the 17 and 1800s where you were going to find pirates uh, predominantly. And as ships travel through this area, one of the things that happens to them is Barbary pirates will do what pirates do. They sail up on ships, they take the ships um, and the people on board as hostages, and then they, you know, get in touch with the uh, home country of that ship. And they basically say, if you want your people back, pay us this money. If you don't pay us that money, we will sell your people as slaves in Africa. And that's what happens to a lot of people who are sailing through there. The way that you can at least not have your people sold as slaves is you have to pay the Barbary pirates. When we were part of the British Empire, Britain paid the Barbary pirates for protection for all people sailing under the British flag. During the revolution, France paid the Barbary pirates for us so that we were protected. When we became our own country, 
we then started paying the Barbary pirates. And Jefferson thought this was absurd. Um, when Jefferson becomes president, he refuses to pay the tribute. A tribute is when you offer payment, you offer something as a form of payment in exchange for safety. Jefferson does not want to pay the tribute to the Barbary pirates. Instead, what he actually does is he sends some of the, some members of the Navy who are the Marines, he sends them over to fight against the Barbary pirates to basically say like, we are not going to pay. Now remember, Jefferson is also the guy who wanted to make sure that we were cutting the size of the military. He looked at Adams and the fact that Adams was, had been building up the military, building up the Navy, building the army, and he said, we don't need that. Well, as it turns out, he used that very Navy that he criticized Adams for when he sent people over to deal with the Barbary pirates. Um, it really ended up being one of the first steps to getting rid of that particular threat to the United States. By 1815, you can see we are not paying any more tribute to the Barbary pirates. Other nations will then begin following the United States in that, and pretty soon the Barbary pirates have lessened the amount of power that they have. Another area where Jefferson is going to get some criticism, like using a navy that he said we didn't need, goes back to that Louisiana Purchase. A lot of people criticized Jefferson because they said, you are loosely interpreting the Constitution. You have also created this country that is so large that it almost seems like you're going to have to have a large government to control all of that land. How can a less powerful government possibly hope to govern the new United States? But the big one where Jefferson gets the most criticism has to do with the Embargo Act of 1807. The problem that he, Jefferson sees is that as Britain and France have been going to war with each other, both countries have been attacking American ships that were sailing to the enemy country. And Jefferson is kind of tired of all of these American ships being attacked. So what he says, how he's going to deal with this, since he does not want to go to war, and remember he has seriously cut the size of the military. The military might be able to fight some Barbary pirates, is not going to be able to fight England and France. So what he does is he instead issues an embargo against not just England and France, but against essentially the world. The embargo means that he is not going to sell any American goods to any foreign country anymore. Now, remember, a lot of Americans, that's how they make their living. You make a product, either a crop in the South or a good in the North, and you sell it around the world. Jefferson has just pressured Congress into passing a law that makes that illegal. Nobody is allowed to sell anything anywhere around the world. And he says, Americans will of course obey this law out of patriotism. He also expects that this is going to be a real tough pill to swallow for England and France. They are going to really feel the loss of American products. In reality, that is not what happens. Americans do not obey this law out of patriotism. What they begin doing is they go back to what they did when England passed those restrictive laws that limited the amount of money they could make. They start smuggling. And that's what you see happening right here. You've got an American who is about to go out to this British ship and illegally sell them some products. And the person who's trying to stop him, you've got this person and the turtle who represent the U.S. government. Um, if you take a look at it, you have the American who's talking about this cursed, oh, grab me. Notice that, oh, grab me, spelled backwards, is embargo. So this cursed embargo is stopping me from actually making any money. This particular cartoonist views the embargo as a real hindrance to Americans. And take a look at the results here. Farm prices are falling because all of a sudden you have all of these crops that are being produced that have to be sold in the United States because we can't sell anywhere else. So supply goes up, meaning prices will drop. People who make their living by shipping, your job is gone. All of those sailors who help out on ships, 
all the people who work on the docks loading and unloading things, those jobs are gone and smuggling does increase. Take a look at what happened to foreign trade. Notice how it drops dramatically once the embargo goes into effect. Pressure to get rid of this embargo finally mounts enough that three days before leaving office in 1809, before the next president takes over officially, Congress does repeal the embargo of 1807 that Jefferson wanted. There was absolutely no real effect on England or France. It simply didn't matter. They were too big and too strong to be hurt by the loss of American goods. Jefferson then begins walking out of the presidency and he talks about leaving the presidency as one would leave uh, prison, that you finally get to take off these shackles and you get to breathe freely again. Jefferson hated the criticism that he received from uh, the purchase of Louisiana, from his use of the military uh, against the Barbary pirates when he claimed he didn't need a military, and lastly, the amount of criticism he got for the Embargo Act of 1807. It hurt Americans, and he was stunned that Americans did not obey because they were patriotic. He seemed to really underestimate what people felt that they they needed, and they needed to be able to make money, and Jefferson did not quite understand that. Jefferson is a complicated person because he seems to, on one hand, say something, but then he does or says something that belies that. He doesn't seem to be very honest with his beliefs all of the time. For example, he talks about the state government is the one that owns the people. However, his own state of Virginia, the people who ran that state were the very wealthy slave-owning elite. They were not the regular common people that he claimed to represent. He talks about the future of America that is farming and everyone should have a farm. But already the industrial age has begun. England is starting to use machines to make things faster and better. And Jefferson seems to turn his back to that. He says he is against slavery, but he's one of the largest slave owners in America with over 400 slaves. He says that urban workers are irresponsible citizens and you should be a farmer. Don't live in a city and work in a city. However, if you're willing to vote for his party because you're a poor city liver, a poor city dweller, by all means, go ahead. He talks about the simple life and how that's what people should live. But he himself led an incredibly luxurious lifestyle. He lived well beyond his means. He could not afford the things that he bought. He bought many things on credit and he was able to do that because he was Thomas Jefferson. And when he died, people saw how in debt he was. He talks about having sympathy for the natives, yet he's going to create a, um, a federal agency, the Indian Bureau, that is simply going to further destroy the lifestyle for natives. He talks about being a strict constructionist of the Constitution, but he will use it loosely to buy Louisiana. He also talks about the importance of a free press that doesn't operate with government interference. However, he is also known to pressure or to push certain journalists into writing things that are negative about his enemies. So is it really free when you have someone from the government who is, you know, encouraging or pushing people to write negative things? Jefferson is an incredibly complex president. However, these three men are responsible for getting us our start under this new constitution and keeping us secure as a nation.